There are lots of state laws about who can contribute to a state election, particularly one in which the candidates are participating in public campaign financing. But there's still a lot of outside money that comes into campaigns, and to help us understand it is Mark Pazniokas of the Connecticut Mirror. Hello. <laughs> All righty. Every election cycle, we hear, hear terms like independent expenditures, dark money, outside money. What are we talking about? We're talking about independent expenditures, dark money. And also, no, uh, <laughs> no, we are talking about money that is not contributed directly to a campaign. There are two forms of campaign funds that influence American elections. Mm -hmm. One are direct contributions to campaigns, and then there are independent expenditures, which take many, many forms. Help us understand, before we get to a specific example on this, help us understand the definitions that federal law now applies to campaign expenditures. The concept behind laws allowing states and Congress to set limits on contributions is the idea that direct contributions to a candidate can be corrupting. It's a nice way to legally bribe people. And mm -hmm. the United States Supreme Court has recognized that and they said, okay, states and Congress, you can set limits on direct contributions because they can be corrupting. And a direct contribution is to the campaign or right. campaign committee. Absolutely. I can okay. write a check to my campaign committee as opposed to outside spending or independent expenditures, which is you are independently doing things to benefit my campaign. Now, the Supreme Court in 2010, in its infinite wisdom, decided that independent expenditures, they're not corrupting at all. Even though they can amount to millions of dollars and a candidate's benefactors can certainly know where the money is coming from. But because it is not direct, it's not considered corrupting, it's considered free speech. So that has kind of turned campaign finance law on its head. And, and there's just a lot that's been going on trying to figure out how to live within these new guidelines from the United States Supreme Court. In an effort to battle that corrupting influence on state elections and state politics, the state legislature uh, approved a public campaign financing bill. It gives candidates who qualify a certain amount of money to spend on their campaign. It also limits the kinds of contributions that come into a campaign. But that doesn't mean, to your, exam to your point, that there isn't uh, another kind of way to corrupt an election if, if you wanted to, or rather, or maybe a little more kindly put, to contribute to a candidate's uh, effort if you wanted to. So let's use the, the example, if we could, of State Senator Ted Kennedy Jr. What happened in his case? Ted Kennedy Jr. ran for the Connecticut State Senate in 2014, and there was a lot of concern that outside groups, right-wing groups, would come in and do massive independent expenditures because he was a Kennedy. So Ted Kennedy agreed to abide by the spending uh, limits of the state's citizens election program. But Ted Kennedy, his relatives and his friends uh, wrote checks of up to $10,000 to the state Democratic Party. And under state law, which does allow state parties to do a certain amount of coordination with uh, candidates, even publicly financed candidates, a lot of money flowed back. Basically, $200,000 flowed into Ted Kennedy's campaign, even though he was supposedly playing by the rules of saying, I'm not going to spend more than, say, hundred grand." What's the takeaway message uh, when, when you look at Connecticut state politics and the role of outside money? that there are many paths that money can flow into campaigns. So what we just talked about with Senator Kennedy, that was something that is legally can be coordinated. The bigger money is the outside money that must be independent. It cannot be coordinated. So let's take a race for governor. In 2014, the Republican and the Democrat were both publicly financed. They lived with a budget of about six and a half million dollars. But outside group spent $18 million. So the two major party candidates publicly finance. You add their grants together, it's $13 million. Outside groups spent $18 million. Some of it was traceable. Some of it was untraceable. So does the, outside, the, does the role of outside money neuter the, the ideals of the public campaign finance program? It certainly raises a question about what 
are the Connecticut taxpayers getting for their six and a half million dollars that they're giving to these major party candidates if outside groups are going to spend so much money? Mark, a spoonful of sugar helps the politics go down. Pazniokas covers politics and elections for the Connecticut Mirror. Did you like that? I like that, but I'm not going to sing it. (laughs) Uh, And he joins us for extra credit. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.